other observations like with increase in altitude the circular horizon widens the radio wave starts distorting as they can travel only in the straight line whereas the earth is spherical so this happens maybe when you're traveling in a train or a bus and in between your mobile network cuts if the earth was flat definitely the radio waves also would have been uniform everywhere so this happens where because that the earth is a sphere along the curvature the radio waves cannot travel straight next the sun rises in the east and sets in the west so you can also feel as if the sun is moving from east to west in a circular pattern so this also proves that the earth is not flat but spherical in shape circumnavigation where Magellan's ship Victoria in 1952 completed one round the world to the same place from where it started from Spain so this also proves that the earth is not flat but a sphere all the heavenly bodies including the earth in the solar system are spherical in shape because of their rotation and revolution they get abraded so the synapses the earth as a planet is spherical in shape moves around the sun and earth is non-luminous that means it doesn't have a light of its own and earth moves in its orbit the earth's diameter is more at the equator than the poles the equatorial diameter is 12,756 km whereas the polar diameter is only 12,714 km. Hence, because of this difference in the diameter between the poles and the equator, the earth is called as oblate spheroid or it is also known as geoid. You can see that the polar diameter is 12,714 kilometers, whereas the equatorial diameter is 12,756 kilometers. So this was about the shape of the Earth. So let's pass on to the next topic, the Earth, home of humankind. But generally speaking, you know that it's only the Earth which has life on it. It's because of the abiotic conditions optimum temperature presence of water light soil that favors the growth of plants and the animals that depend on this system so hence the earth is known as the unique planet let's see what are all those factors that favors life on the earth or the factors that make the earth the home of humankind the earth is at the optimum distance from the sun giving an ideal temperature for life process so life process for simple example milk turns to curd at an optimum temperature you would have experienced you would have noticed that during the winter the rate at which the milk takes time to get converted to curd is longer than the summer the milk can turn to curd at a faster rate during the summer why because the summer temperature makes it more optimum for the bacteria called as the lactobacillus lactobacillus becomes more active at high temperature so the temperature is very low during the winter and considerably high during the summer that makes it more favorable for these bacteria to be active so this was a simple example that the earth has an optimum temperature that can help in life process the average temperature is around 17 degrees celsius whereas mercury and venus has 400 degrees celsius so at this temperature definitely there cannot be any life and at the same time there can be large-scale greenhouse effect the earth has important gases like nitrogen carbon dioxide and other gases and among these gases nitrogen plays a very very important role see ozone is an important gas which is present in the earth's atmosphere and this protects earth from ultraviolet rays reaching the earth and you know that ultraviolet rays 
can have an adverse effect on human skin. You would have learned in your lower classes that these harmful rays or radiations can ca cause skin cancer. The next factor and the fact that earth has 70% of water that has moderating effect on the climate and life process means structural and functional unit of biosphere known as ecosystem known as life zone of the earth. So it is the presence of water which is helping all the life process to exist on the earth. Students you all know that there are different sources of water basically maybe a pond or a river or a lake and vast expanses of water known as ocean and you know the basic source of heat is the sun and because of the radiation the water turns to vapor and reaches high up into the sky for condensation so condensation give rise to the formation of clouds and when these clouds become heavy they downpour or they reach the surface of the earth in the form of rain which is known as precipitation so evaporation condensation and precipitation helps circulation of water on the surface of the earth and this has an advantage and this is known as the hydrological cycle or the water cycle so hydrological cycle has advantage so it ensures that there is spatial distribution of water and the water is redeposited on the earth and it is also ensuring that the water is supplied to the different parts on the earth. There are some places that receive heavy rainfall. There are some places on the earth that receive scanty rainfall and moderate rainfall. For example, Congo Basin, Amazon Basin in Africa and America receive the highest rainfall. So hence you find uh, equatorial or evergreen forest. But whereas Thar Desert in India and uh, worldwide anywhere where deserts are found because of the scanty rainfall there is lack of vegetation but whatever it is the circulation of water from land to the atmosphere and again back to the land helps in different types of natural vegetation and as you all know that the vast expanses of forest is the natural habitat of animals so this is a uh, very clear explanation that can prove that the presence of water helps in the life process. The water from sea, rivers and lakes evaporates to condense as clouds and falls back on the earth in the form of rains known as precipitation. Hydrological cycle redeposits water to the various sources, distribute rains to every place regulates temperature so the surface of the earth or the outer layer of the earth on which the rain water accumulates in different water pockets like lakes rivers and vast expanses like ocean the layer that holds the water is known as the lithosphere or the crust and it's a part of biosphere and you know biosphere is the combination of atmosphere, hydrosphere and then lithosphere. Lithosphere is known as the productive layer. Why? Because it supports life as it has fertile soil that helps in the growing of plants and trees. Biosphere provides food and shelter. Life in biosphere are of two forms. Plant kingdom known as flora, animal kingdom known as fauna. All the natural vegetation spatially distributed on the surface of the earth is known as flora. For example, you have tropical deciduous forest, tropical evergreen forest, equatorial evergreen forest, savanna grasslands and many more are the examples of natural vegetation or the plant kingdom known as flora and at the same time the type of natural vegetation determines the type of animal life the biosphere on land is called as the terrestrial whereas the biosphere in water is called as the aquatic it could be fresh water or marine as you all know that there is an interaction between the biotic and the abiotic factors 
biotic factors that include all living organism it could be unicellular or multicellular right from a small insect to a very huge animal like elephant human beings come under the biotic factors whereas abiotic factors that include sun or the light the temperature the rainfall that means water and the soil that supports the growth of plants is categorized or is known as the abiotic factor so the interaction between the biotic and the abiotic factors help in life process